Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So I realized in that my last video had like no introduction to who I am and uh, what I do and what I would like to do with this channel. So hi, my name is Christina. I am an artist and I am making a tarot deck which is slow going at the moment. Um, it's a tarot deck that is um, in watercolor and some mixed media and yeah I only have a few major arcana done and have a few more to get done with that suit and then continue on with the minor arcana um, which is exciting and yeah I figured that I would try out a hashtag so in my previous video, I, I said that I couldn't really do hashtags because whatever reason, um, turns out I lied. Um, I found this hashtag that is, it serves like a good introduction. Um, it's by Simon from the Hermit's Cave and it's called hashtag all about tarot 2022. Um, so I'm a bit late to this hashtag it was like four months ago that he did the video that first started it so um oops uh <laughs> but i figured it's a, it's still a good way for me to introduce myself and um the you know have a bit of fun with sharing this uh this information because he has 13 questions or 13 prompts and it's all very, um, very interesting. So let's get started. And the first uh, prompt is the first deck ever, uh, your first deck ever and how you encountered it. So my first deck was the Shadowscape Tarot. Um, how I encountered it was, well, I looked for many tarot decks before choosing one and this one was at the time in 2013 this one was the one that called to me and it's just a very gentle um friendly deck i would say um focus please focus anytime now Yay, focus. Okay. So Yeah, this this tarot deck was a very good introduction um to the tarot for me, I think, cuz it's very Rider Waite Smith based. Um but it's also very it has its own spin to it, like the Hierophant being an elder tree um, and, you know, just be, it, it seemed more approachable to me and it really let my intuition fly um, and um, I don't know, it was a very friendly approach to the tarot um, since the imagery of the Rider Waite Smith was kind of jarring from the start considering that I was coming from a Christian uh, evangelical uh, background um, and diving into something as esoteric as the tarot uh, was kind of nerve-wracking so um, also they're pretty uh, even though they're, they're they may depict some very harsh things um, Stephanie Puymun Law's art is just beautiful and evocative and I just love it. I trimmed my copy and also etched it in silver a long time ago and left the titles underneath. So um, you can see that the, the title section is like very worn. Um, but yeah. This this is a good deck, and um, I haven't been reading with this for a long time, so it's one that I'd like to reconnect uh, 
in 2023 if possible um, just as a as a nice exercise I guess to uh, going back to basics I guess for me so yeah next is um, did I answer how to how I encountered it yeah I did okay um, the next deck is uh, your last deck and how you your taste have changed so my last deck that I bought or is it the last deck that I bought or traded because I, I have two different options for the last one that I bought was is a, a next world tarot and for the last one that I traded for were these the crow tarot and the dame darcy tarot um how my tastes have changed i don't think they've changed i think they just expanded um i it's it's not it's kind of hard to describe for me which is weird because i'm an artist so i i should be able to talk more about my tastes but i i guess i i don't know how to describe it i guess i don't have tastes <laughs> that doesn't make any sense i'll just flip through this one while i'm talking um so yeah i there is some change in that i realize i like the illustrative uh, illustrate mm, illustration type depictions I like both more realistic or cartoony um, depictions I like ink drawings I have the wild unknown um, so there's that and I also have um, the Muse Tarot, oh sorry, the Muse Tarot, um, which is digital collage. And I have this, oh, some of them are upside down because I shuffled um, for reversals last night. Anyways, um, I have this like fantasy self lately that is just into collage decks. So I'm, I'm like, I guess that way my tastes have changed because I'm finding collage to be very interesting um, as a medium. I am not at the point of trying out collage for myself, like executing a piece in collage since I mostly do paintings and drawings. Um, my just my my head can't wrap around. Uh, uh, collage as a medium for me but other people doing it it's amazing um, so yeah I don't sorry about all the reversals I'm not I'm not gonna go on changing them as I go uh, anyways um, so yeah uh, let's move on The third question is why tarot? And I guess I'll I'll have this spread out all nice while I answer. Why tarot? Um I want to say like Kelly Bear said, why not tarot? Um but I guess I really love I guess the system how organized it is in that it's organized by two two um, arcana major and minor um, majors are big lessons minor there are the the minor lessons the more everyday life and how the minors are divided between different elements and each element corresponds to a different 
part of life. I don't know. I wrote down some notes um, when I first started writing down the questions. Um, so let me see what I wrote here. Yep, I love the systems and the stories created through the cards. I love that the cards being 78 different images can form so many stories, so many scenarios, so many situations or a different situations. I don't know what I'm talking about, I guess. And it works. I don't know how, but it works. It, it, it fits into whatever's going on in one way or another. And it can be used predictively or it can be used for self-improvement or it can be used for storytelling or you know creative prompts or or just like i i don't know it has a lot of uses and i just find it fascinating which is interesting because the last time i said maybe i'm bored with the tarot but now i'm like nah i don't i don't think i can get bored with the tarot it's so expansive yeah and that's my answer okay tarot pet peeves um okay so tarot pet peeves i guess the the saying to to new people that your decks need to be gifted that's a pet peeve of mine. It's like, no, if I'd waited for my first deck to be gifted to me, I'd still be waiting. Um, another pet peeve is this, the thickness. I know that this is not very good Llewellyn cardstock, um, but I like how my hand is able to fit all the deck the whole deck on just one single hand versus this chonker. Like, look at this, look at this. Look, look at that. This is a tiny, tiny deck compared to this. Look at that. Which is weird again, because I don't mind decks like this. I actually like the decks that are like bigger than my hand but I, I don't know <laughs> it doesn't need to make sense okay it's a pet peeve I find it easy to to shuffle this way um yeah I I riffle shuffle I like riffle shuffling don't come at me um but yeah so there's that Favorite tarot spread. Okay, so um, I like the um, typical three card reading. Um, sometimes I do within without advice. There was a time um, in 2018, I think, that uh, Kelly from The Truth and Story and I want to say Patrick. I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Um, I haven't seen his channel in a while. She and a, another tarot tuber made this challenge of exploring the within without advice spread that came with the Marielle. Um, it was like a deep dive exercise type of thing for the people that had the Marielle tarot when it was still the first edition. Um, so I like this. Um, I also like uh, sometimes being like doing an intuitive three card reading see what what appears and also just a, like a shadow from the bottom of the deck um uh, or like an underlying situation or something to watch out for i don't know i i guess i need to like clear that up uh, for myself um the other thing that i like to do is I don't know why I'm changing it because I'm not gonna turn out the turn the the cards around. Anyways, um, um, uh, spirit, earth, air, fire, and water. 
um, which is a, a five element reading. Each element corresponds to different aspects of life and yeah I just uh, find it interesting with how easy it is for me to read this spread. I've been told that when I do the spread I seem very sure of what I'm talking about and uh, of myself and I don't know I guess uh, things flow better um, when I do the spread. Um, so there's that and yeah there are other spreads that I like to try around but those are the ones that I most use. Preferred Tarot System Rider Waite Smith I don't really know how to read Marseille or how to read Thoth I'd be interested in learning. Um, I don't know when I would be able to learn because I have little time during the week for myself. But yeah, that, that would be a nice thing to learn. I also want to learn how to read Lenormand, but that's not tarot, so it's beside the point. Um, but yeah, uh, Rider Waite Smith is what I learned with um, and what I know. So it's that. Tarot Ritual. I shuffle. I like shuffling my decks. Um, I like... Ah! Knocking. To clear... Um, to clear energies. Um, or to clear... Be, in between readings, if I, if I can't do like a proper smoke cleansing or uh, leave it out on you know in the sun or in the moon or cleanse it with sound or something I just go and knock that previous energy out literally <laughs> um, how do you use tarot I use tarot, I like using it for self-reflection. Sometimes I, I want to see into the future and try to do a divinatory, uh, but that's more for fun. Um, I don't really take it that seriously, um, unless something is, like is uncanny. Nah. Uh, <laughs> I'm all over the place, sorry. Um, but yeah, d more for self self help, I guess, self reflection, seeing my uh, like a mirror. I use it as a mirror. So your significator card and why you feel it represents you. That's number nine. I haven't been numbering these. Oh well. So at first I was, I felt really connected to this card. I, I saw it and I was like, oh, that's me dancing on top of turtles. Because I, I, if that were something I could do, I would try it. Um, as long as it doesn't hurt the turtles, of course. But yeah, I, I am also, I felt very connected to the element of water and thought, you know, water of water for the queen of cups. I just thought this would be my my significator card but then I guess it depends on the deck because when I saw the wild unknown I saw this and I felt very connected to it. The sense of creativity and groundedness and newness um, of the daughter of wands also really connects with me so I don't know I guess I don't I don't necessarily use significator cards these are just cards that I've connected to through my journey um, but these are the only two from these two decks that I've found I felt like that connection to um, I don't really use again significator cards 
most expensive tarot acquisition. The only reason I have this deck is because I was there for the first pre-order. This is the Bonestone and Earth Flesh Tarot by uh, Avalon Cameron and Anna Turian. Um, sorry, it's out of print. Um, un unless you you want to get the sketched version, I think that's that's still in print. Um, I don't know what to say about this deck. Um, a lot of things happened during the pre-order process, so that left a, a sour taste in my mouth. Um, oh, it's not in focus. Of course it's not in focus. Hello? Okay. But, um, it's still something I want to use. I want to explore this world. I want to be able to you know, get what I need to get from this deck and maybe eventually pass it on, but for now, it is mine and it'll stay in my collection. This is the most expensive deck I, I ordered as a pre-order. The most expensive deck that I got second hand would be these first edition um kickstarter edition this one has the original ten of swords card um and this one has the the misprinted um number two on the empress card but yeah i felt that i missed out so I kept myself over missing out on them from the Kickstarter because I felt for both of these, I felt um, like I like I should have them. <laughs> it sounds so silly. Um, they're just decks of cards, um, but I. I felt like I missed the opportunity to, um, I don't know, get to know these images and work with them, see their original versions as they were first intended to be, I guess. So yeah, I am not going to say how much I pay for these because that's nobody's business. Um, but yeah, these are my most, I got them at the same time, um, from the same person. Unicorn deck, something that is so hard to find right now. I'm, I'm going to say the bone stone again, um, cause it's, it's very hard to find this edition of the deck, um, colored at a reasonable price. Um, I've seen copies go for a thousand or five hundred. Yeah, I, I guess this is the unicorn deck that I have, um, among others. Uh, the unicorn deck that I know is very difficult to get and I want is the Road to Nowhere Oracle. It's out of print and I... I have been stalking eBay and different tarot trade and sell groups um, just in case but I know that if I find it it's going to be a ridiculous price as well because it's out of print. Um, so yeah that's that's also why I, I mentioned um, the interest new interest in collage decks. Um, I don't know, I have this fantasy self that will be completed once the Road to Nowhere Oracle is part of my, um, my collection. But then again, it's not necessary. I'm just so curious about the images. I want to see the images. 
maybe I should just look at a walkthrough and be done with that. And I don't know. I guess the other one that I'm interested in is the Visions of the Muse Oracle. But that's still in print. So I can find that whenever I have money to spare. So number 12 is what's the most important lesson the tarot has taught you to trust my intuition. Um, I'm just going to flip through this deck. Um, to trust in myself and what I can see in the cards. Um, it's taught me a bit of confidence. Um, which I've, I, I need to regain after my hiatus with tarot. I spent six years learning about tarot and then dropped it, um, for whatever reason. Um, and spent like two or three years without reading tarot, more or less. I, I would pick up a deck, shuffle, and try to give myself a reading, but it never amounted to much. Um, I didn't journal, I didn't, um, you know, take in the readings or the lessons in the readings or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's it's also taught me that the future is fluid, nothing is written, and there are many ways to take action. So yeah. And finally, number 13, a tarot dinner party. There's one guest of honor plus two other guests. Um, I would invite Pamela Coleman Smith as the guest of honor and two other guests would be Anna Turian and Benabel Wen. If I could, I would invite many other artists uh, that like tarot artists that um, I don't know want to geek, geek out at uh, um, what what whatever else uh, all about tarot, you know. Um, all about the art and just, yeah, uh, be together and be artsy, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, those, I, I think that the, those three people would be a very interesting conversation. Um, I love Anna Turian's decks and Benabel Wen's, uh, Holistic Tarot and... Anything Benavel Wen does actually is like, whoa, how do you do this? It's like hey, you're amazing. Anyways, I'm 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 fangirling here here. Um and then learn more about Pixie's life from her and learn about her take on the tarot and what the uh, images meant to her and if the images as she was creating related to a certain a specific point in her life that would be very interesting to learn and yeah um, so thank you for joining me I am sorry I didn't have more interesting stuff for you to see um, I'll just do this and this and this and this for the thumbnail. I hope you enjoyed it and if you want to stick around that would be awesome. If you'd like to like and subscribe that would be awesome too. Um, and leave a comment. I want to I wanna have conversations with people and talk with people about tarot and just meet friends that's that's kind of what i'm why i'm doing this um apart from recording my my journey into making a tarot deck 
I, I want to be able to enter into the tarot community in YouTube and find friends. So, yeah. Until next time, I will see you then or you will see me then or however this, this thing works. Um, yeah. Bye.